So we were talking about Roanoke Island again. And we were talking about the second colony that was trying to make do on the island. The captain, Sir Walter Raleigh's, Raleigh's captain had left the colonists there under the leader who was named John White. And his granddaughter was born there. But then the colonists started fighting with the Indians, not getting along and trusting them. And the Indians became very dangerous to them. And the Indians refused to help them. They really needed help from the Indians. The colonists really didn't want to be colony, colonists. Just like the first group came back, they wanted to go home. They wanted to go home, but they had no way. All they had was a small ship, a small, actually, boat. And so they thought, we need help. So John, you're the leader. What do you decide? And he decided that he'd go back to England. Took a couple men. They settled off in the small boat. boat and it took him three months to get back. To England for help. And so in 1587 is the year he began that long journey across the Atlantic. And he got there and told Sir Walter Raleigh what had happened. And so Walter Raleigh was busy, really busy, but he was also, also wanted to get another ship back there. But what happened? We're talking, it was 1587, do you know what happened in 1588? Do you remember? The Spanish Armada War with England happened. So Raleigh couldn't get the supplies. In fact, they needed all of his ships to fight in this war. And so um, John White couldn't get back. And then um, how could he get back in time? He couldn't get back that year. And how could the colonists survive? He was worried and he was worried about his children and his granddaughter. Disaster struck, more disaster struck, um, and he couldn't get back. More fighting wars with the Spanish and these things in England. Finally, it took three years for John White to find a way back to his little colony in America. And on the way there, it took months because his ship was going down to South America. And finally, it went north to Virginia. And he, to he told the captain, I need to go and find out about these colonists on Roanoke Island. They finally got there. And guess what? The island was empty. <laughs> Not a single colonist left. What happened to his kids, his daughter and his granddaughter? You know, what had happened, they had disappeared and there was no signs of any fighting at all. In fact, most of the buildings had been moved. They weren't even there. They had taken the wood away. Did they move to a different place? Did the Indians come and take everything? You know, what had happened? There were no dead bodies. There were no bones. There were no signs of any kinds of fighting at all. You know, what had happened? Finally, he looked and on one tree, he thought maybe they would left one sign on one tree. They found the words C-R-O-A-T-O-A-N, Croatoan. Well, there is, there is an island by that name, so maybe they moved there. So they, he went to that nearby island, and it was so tiny, and there was no sign of life there either. No one had been there. So then he, he's thinking, what? What shall we do? So then on the ship that he was with, you know, um, they got into this big storm. They didn't want to stay on Roanoke Island. And so John White didn't get back to America for 20 years later. Can you imagine that? 20 years later, the lost colony. There was no colony. What had happened? What had happened to his little what girl, his little granddaughter of Virginia, dear? Well, some people say, legend goes, that in the, the Indian tribes of this in the Native American tribes of this area, 
there was a blonde-headed, beautiful woman living with the Indians. About 20 years old, the same age as Virginia Dare would be. Yet they never had a chance to talk to her. In fact, she was just another Indian, another Native American. That's what the Indians did sometimes. So that might have been a clue. How else could a, a blonde hair, blue-eyed young woman be running with the Indians? Hmm. Quite a story. So we always know the story about the first colony of, of um, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and we always know about the Pilgrims and Plymouth Rock, but we rarely hear of that story, do, do you? I don't think I really would want to go live on Roanoke Island these days. Would you? Whoa, oh, I forgot to go back. There's another theme. Sir Walter Raleigh. Yes, Queen Elizabeth, she really had a favorite in him. In fact, some people say that she was actually in love with him, but she said she would never, never marry. But Sir Walter Raleigh wasn't so keen on the queen. He was, he was more of a charmer, you know, but he really liked her maid of honor. Her maid of honor was named Bess Throckmorton. And so he decided to marry her. But he didn't want the queen to know because then he knew the queen might not like that idea. So they married in secret. And they lived in secret. But then Bess Throckmorton, now Raleigh, Bess Raleigh, had a baby. And the queen found out, and she found out that they were secretly married, and she didn't like secrets at all. So she arrested them both and threw them in that high tower. You know where they had thrown Queen Elizabeth, Mary had thrown Queen Elizabeth, and where the two princes had disappeared. It was more of a, a prison cell. And she threw them there in the tower for quite a while, but after a while... I would say she that she they were in there for just a few months, really. Um, she let them go, but she banished him from the court. And so um, Raleigh says, like truth, like a tr truthless charmer, so are my days expired. Walter's deep, deep grief as the, uh, the queen's favorite were over, and he was and he grieved. But Raleigh lived many more years, and he had many more adventures, but he never went back to America again. In fact, he never did go to America in the first place. And Elizabeth, during her lifetime, really never had any stable colonies in North America. But then when she died, King James, the Stuart, the, Scot the Scottish ruler, took over England. He did not like Raleigh at all. So he threw him in the high tower for 12 years. And then finally he said, I'm gonna let this guy go. He wants to go to America. Let, let's let him, I'm gonna send him to South America and maybe he'll bring back some gold. So he sent him to South America. Well, you know, the Spanish were becoming very rich. Sir Walter Raleigh did not bring back any gold to King James. So he got mad at Raleigh. They had a big argument, and he ended up executing him. What a sad story. You know, Sir Walter Raleigh, the Queen's, the Queen's charming, charming knight, ends up getting executed. Oh, these stories sometimes are very, very hard to tell. But you know what happened then. A lot of people, colonists did come to North America. They weren't coming for gold, and they weren't coming for silver. They weren't coming for um, uh, to plant to plant um, colonies 
for the for the for the plant colonies for them for England necessarily for the queen or the king they didn't come for that reason they didn't come to go have furs or crops or anything like that do you know why the first colonists came for religious freedom they wanted to worship God and they were determined to come to America and stay in America. The next story I'm going to tell, I love. So please stay tuned. It's about the Mayflower. But it's about two young teenagers on the Mayflower that are the beginnings of the new colonies in America.